All right, now we all know that Apple released OS X Leopard last week. There's a lot of hoopla about it, people doing the Vista comparison, like, you know, is it, is it all that in a bag of potato chips? Um, in many ways, yes. In many ways, it's all right. What? <laughs> <laughs> you crazy. Well, Leopard was seen by many as kind of uh, what Vista should have been. It had all the kind of really cool guy features, a lot of the kind of visual stuff that Vista tried to attempt. I don't know. But, uh, no? I, I see no comparison whatsoever. No? No. I see, I see Microsoft products that you can install on just about a huge array of hardware. Uh-huh. And Apple focuses on very, very, very specific hardware that they control to a good degree and provide a very customized experience, I think, that, I don't know, in many ways, if I was going to hand a brand new computer to somebody who had never had one before, I'd be inclined to go that direction. With the Mac? Yeah. Wow. Well, now, for, for those of you wondering, it's, you know, Leopard does offer a lot of things. Unfortunately, it actually excludes a few of the older machines. So the specs basically are a P- PowerPC G5 or G4 running at an 867 megahertz speed. Faster a DVD drive, it does come on the DVD disc, built-in Firewire. You need at least 512 megs of RAM. However, as with all things OS X, the more RAM you have, the merrier. A built-in display or a display connected to an Apple-supplied video card and at least 9 gigs of space available. Now, that's for an upgrade. If you do a clean install, you're actually going to need around 11 gigs of uh, clean space. Now, there's a lot of features, supposedly 300-some-odd features that they improved or included uh, into Leopard. Now, all these are kind of cool, but the ones I'm going to focus on today, I think, are the ones that most people think about is Leopard. Now, the first one is Spaces. Now, Spaces, as we all know, or uh, in Linux, as we all know, you have multiple desktops. You can do multiple desktops, and essentially OS X follows that route by giving you Spaces. It gives you four discrete uh, uh, desktops that you can, for example, I can open up um, this uh, folder right here, Roger Chang's album, and then I can have a separate one that has a separate items listed. So I can have four different workspaces. So if I wanted to, I could say, hey, this no longer belongs in this space. It had needs belongs in the one down here. I select it and it can be in another spot. Uh, open that and then I can drag a uh, particular folder. Whoops, not there. Grab that one. I can drop it there. So in essence, I'll have four different spots uh, I can have stuff I can be working on, which is kind of cool. I think some of my developer friends, too, are kind of excited about the fact that they were able to run virtual environments within the different spaces as well. So they were if actually you, switching between operating you, systems as well. Well, it seemed kind of cool to me. But. If you have VMware or you're running parallels, right. you can actually do that. Now, of course, you're going to need the, the CPU horsepower to back it up. Now, yeah, if, you, if you're right. running a really low-end G5, you probably won't get as good of an experience uh, doing that. But if you're running something at a high-end Mac Pro, yeah, it's something that is quite feasible. And probably, as you said, you know, if you're doing development, you're doing development. They're running high-end boxes. Yeah, so. you're running high-end boxes, and it's you know something in, nice to uh, to look and easy to do. Now, another thing that uh, that um, Apple touted was was something they call Stacks. Now, Stacks. Is essentially, if you look down here at the bottom lower right corner of the dock on the OS X, you can see right there where it says R. Chang's album. I'm going to click on that, and now as you can see, that actually expands out. That's a folder, and there's multiple items there. Now, if I wanted to just take a peek into that folder, I can actually click on it, and it will fan out in this uh, display. Do that again? uh, Sure. Let me move this. I want to see that. I want to see that fanning action. That fanning action. There you go. Now, if you don't, now the cool thing is this is not static. If you attach this and they actually have a download folder already, if you do- have a download folder and you keep downloading items into it, only the most recent items will start appearing. So that way, if you have a folder that you're constantly copying data into that has newer information, you can always be assured that all that latest information will be uh, fanning out. So if you have like 100 or some odd items, they won't obviously all fit in this, but you can click right there and it'll bring up the folder. Wasn't that one of the complaints, though, too, is that whatever the last item is that goes in, it'll be the item that the icon is, or the, that is what represents, that's what the icon appears as. So exactly. if you're trying to create a download folder, it might yeah. become confusing in the sense that whatever that last item is that went into that folder would then become, would be your icon representation for that. So I mean, you bring up a really good point. And one of the, Minor, but. No, I mean, it is actually a very legitimate. too. It's a fixable, but it's also a very legitimate gripe. I mean, the thing is that. Say you don't want them to constantly change. What if you just want to uh, keep them the same? Or uh, conversely, what if you want to see the whole thing but not necessarily bring up the entire 
a folder. Wouldn't it be cool if this thing kept spinning around like a huge wheel, like a pinwheel? You just move up or down, and then it would automatically go through each file. That way you don't have to bring up a folder and kind of block up the view. So far, the interface, too, performance-wise, seems very very smooth, even running on your notebook. So. Uh, I'm quite impressed. I was thinking that it'd be a little sluggish, but it, you know, this is a MacBook. It's a 2 gigahertz uh, laptop uh, running Intel Core 2 Duo. Works just fine. Okay. Now, the other thing that uh, everyone was kind of going gaga over f is uh, Time Machine. Set up Time Machine here. Now, Time Machine is essentially a backup application. It allows you to do a, 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 a copy your files over. Now, the thing is, it's not as selective as, say, using something from a, a third party like Retrospect where you can actually pick. This uh, is a full system backup application? Yeah, which is good because... Uh, Heck yeah. The time machine. Yeah, I know. Having it built into the operating system like that. And this is the other thing that kind of... Uh, uh, this kind of annoys me is that if you have multiple accounts, for example, one of them I have as a file vaulted account. It's basically an encrypted folder image. Okay. Uh, or a file image. It will not back it up because it's encrypted, which is, you know, on one hand, it's good for security purposes. On the other hand, since it's all on the same laptop, I should be able to do it, but I would have to go back into my account and do it. But um, well, that, that almost makes sense because you've protected that account and you wouldn't yeah. want somebody to make a duplicate of that account and walk away with it. It's a, it's, a very I would think. it's a very simple backup application, and if that's all you need, it's fine. But if you're looking for something a little more sophisticated, if you need to do it amongst uh, multiple machines or, let's say, a small network, probably not something that you would uh, immediately run to. Instead, you'd probably want to use some, a third-party application. But okay. it's there, and I think in many ways it works better than the comparable Windows uh, backup uh, system. This one I like a lot it is uh, what they call quick views. I'm going to right click here, and then as you can see in the pop up window right here, it says uh, quick look. I can pop that up, and then it's going to basically play the file. It's a file I made for the uh, uh, now music. That, that would be different than, say, it's not launching exactly. like iTunes or something like it's that. It's not or, launching anything. Or QuickTime or whatever. Whether it's a document. Whether it's a video file, whether it's an a audio file, it will play it, it will show it, and it will de describe. It will not allow you to edit, it will not allow you to change, but if you've always wondered, I got 25 different files in here that has the song I need, but I don't want to necessarily open up an application every time I double click. You can do the quick view, pops up, you can uh, listen to it, or watch it, or read it if it's a, if it's a text document. Let's see if I can find a text document. Nice. Uh, I could see that being very handy for a Word document or it something is, like that. It is uh, quite, quite handy. Uh, or uh, whatever kind of text files you're looking through. Or even PDF documents if you get a lot of things with funky naming oh, here, conventions. We'll this. With the server text log, that yeah, will do a quick And it's going to give me... Oh, is there like a, can, you, can you assign like a hotkey shortcut to that maybe? Uh, Where you even you might be able to, but uh, I have not tested that. But essentially, this is the installer log file. I, it's like a, it's like the preview in OS X, except it's a lot quicker, and you don't you aren't necessarily launching an application because it's built gotcha. in. Now, the final thing is the AutoFS OS X uh, kind of auto file system mounting process. Now, you can actually can't see it, but what it does is essentially multi-thread the whole process of mounting network drives or drives in general. Typically, when I try to uh, link up to our uh, NAS here, it takes about two or three seconds before it sees it and then mounts it and allows you to access it. Using AutoFS built in with Leopard, it actually is instantaneous. You double click on it and it opens up. I have a shortcut to our network drive, it opens up instantaneously as if it were a local drive. This is so much better than waiting for a beach ball to spin constantly around and around and around, waiting for that drive to mount. And I think, in many ways, it's a lot better. Now, to cut this uh, segment short, because we are running short on time, is Leopard something that you should go out and run out and buy if you're already running Tiger on a like, Intel Mac? No, I don't think, personally, you, you need to. It uh, has a lot of cool, nifty new eye candy features, including uh, Time Machine uh, spaces. There's a lot of cool stuff in iChat as well with uh, uh, some of the uh, screensaver functions. But if you're running Tiger, your system runs fine, there's really no compelling reason to upgrade. If you're running, some, say, something like Panther on a G5, or uh, uh, it's probably, it might be worth it to you to upgrade because there's a lot of features that, are, that were included in Tiger that aren't in Panther that are also as part of Leopard. And if you miss out on Tiger, 
go straight to uh, go straight to Leopard. But in that case, you know, if you're gonna if you want the OS and you're looking to buy a new Mac soon, soon might as well just buy it with the Mac. Good for newer hardware. Good for newer hardware. I really think it's been tuned for the Intel platform uh, that all the Macs are based on. It works really well, but again, you know. Not something you should run out and buy unless you have a compelling reason to. Do you have any upgrade issues on your notebook? Uh, you know what? The one thing I'm going to say is a lot of people are having issues, and those tended to be the people with power PC processors, non-Intel-based uh, Macs. They ran into issues, and most of those people upgraded. I upgraded. Uh, I had some issues with applications launching. Um, but I did a clean install, and all those issues were gone. Typically, when I reinstall OSs on a Macintosh, I always do a clean install. I s really recommend you buy an external hard drive. Uh, I basically backed up my entire old uh, hard drive onto this using a product called SuperDuper, totally free. SuperDuper, you can find it, do a search on it. Um, allows you to clone out your drive to any hard drive you have. It's a great way to save your data in case something goes horribly awry and basically do a clean install, attach the FireWire drive to your Mac, you'll pull all the data back over, all your system preferences, and it'll be just like you have a new OS with all the same settings. Nice.